Hello, I'm Lee, and this is part two of my video series, Advanced Topics and Credit Spreads. And this video focuses on probability of profit, or how to calculate the probability of profit for our high probability trades. And that's the cornerstone of trading credit spreads, is trading high probability trades. Now, when you trade stocks, you try to make a prediction about your outlook of where the stock is going. And most people, most of the time, are really bad at predicting the market. But with credit spreads, we use math and probability theory to take positions with a high probability of profit. If I ask you what's the probability the stock will go up, nobody can really answer that. But if I ask you what's the probability that this coin toss will be heads, well, it's easy to calculate the answer is 50%. So let's take a look at this chart and see if we can have an example about how to make a high probability trade on a credit spread. So I'm going to look and see what my outlook is on this chart. I can see that there is an upward trend and I can see that it's been at an all time high recently. And if I was to just pick a direction, I would say I'm, I'm bullish on this stock. Um, there's a little bit of consolidation and maybe right now there is support at 89 and this is a good buying opportunity. But the truth is, um, if I was good at predicting the direction of stocks, I would be a rich genius. But instead, I'm doing something with a little bit higher probability of success, and that's credit spreads. So what else can I look at here? I see that maybe there's a little bit more support at 85. It's probably not going down below 85. It's probably not going much below where it is, but it's certainly not going below 85. So what's a nice safe bet? I would bet that it probably won't go below 80. So there's my outlook. I'm saying that I'm bullish on this stock in that 80 is a nice safe spot to put a stake in the ground. Okay, so I said $80 is a nice safe strike, but how safe is it? And the answer is we don't know until we calculate probability of profit. So let's take a look at that. Now, before we can calculate probability of profit, you really have to understand the Greeks. The first one is theta, and we talked about that in the last video. It's the change in value as time passes. And what we know is that the extrinsic value of an option approaches zero as we approach expiration. We already talked about that, so you should understand it fully. Um, the next one is vega. Vega is the change in value with implied volatility. And we know that as implied volatility goes up, the value of an option goes up. And as implied volatility goes down, the value of the option goes down. And then there's some others. Uh, the next one is rho, which is the change in value with respect to interest rates. Now, right now in 2020, interest rates are very low and nobody even talks about rho. They just don't care. Um, if interest rates go to 10, 12, 15%, rho is going to be a big topic of conversation. But for now, we're just going to ignore it. Okay, the next one is delta, and this is the big one you care about. It's the change in value with respect to the change in the underlying. So if the stock moves up by a dollar, how much does the option value move up? It's usually not by a dollar. It's some fraction of that. And the next one is gamma. And gamma is the change in delta with respect to the underlying. Uh, I like to think of it as the first derivative of delta. Anyway, we're going to focus now on delta so you can see how it applies to probabilities. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of Delta so we can see exactly how it works. In this example, we have a $100 call option that has 20 days till expiration. So if the stock is trading at $140, then it's $40 deep in the money. So if we have a $1 price change in the underlying stock, we can expect something like a $1 price change in the option. Um, for every dollar the stock moves, the option moves. And in this case, we have a delta. We're going to call it 0.99. But when we're at a $60 stock, we're $40 out of the money. This option is basically valueless. It, maybe it's worth a penny. Maybe it's worth two cents. But chances are this um, call option is going to expire out of the money. So if it goes from $60 to $61, well, it's still... $39 out of the money and it's still pretty much valueless. So a $1 change in the stock price represents a one penny change in the option value. So 
if we look in between, we got the $100 price. The $100 price is at a delta of 0.5. And what we're saying is that if we're at the money, we have a $100 call and we have a $100 strike price, that if the stock moves up a dollar, then the option is going to move up 50%, 50 cents. And if the stock moves down a dollar to 99, well, then the option will move down 50 cents. And what you can see is that the deeper we are in the money, the more the option value tracks the stock price change one to one. But when we're deep out of the money, we get almost zero change. So it's important to understand how delta works and how delta is used to show the value or change of value in an option with respect to the change in value of the stock. So the question is, what does all of this have to do with probability of profit? Probability is based on our assumptions about how prices move, which is both random and complicated. But we do have a bunch of good models. We're looking at Black and Scholes, and it's a very nice log normal distribution that we can use to calculate our probability very explicitly. But you can see that the math is very complicated, and it's kind of impractical for daily use. You can take it and build it into software, but to do these on the fly, we really need a model or a much simpler method for calculating our probability. And a great way of doing that is to use Delta. Let's go back and take a look at our $100 call option. What you can see is with the $140 stock price that was $40 deep in the money, we had a delta of 99 or 0.99. And that means that we have a 99% probability of being in the money at the time of expiration. But our $60 stock price is $40 out of the money. It has a delta of 0.1 or 0.01, excuse me. And that means that we have a 1% chance of being in the money at the time of expiration. And if we go to the $100 stock price, what you can see is we're at the money. It could go up or it could go down. So therefore, we have a 50% probability of being in the money at the time of expiration that matches our 50 delta. So you can see in this curve that you can use delta as a predictor of the probability of being in the money at the time of expiration. So how does it work? How does delta become such a good predictor of whether or not an option is going to be in the money at the time of expiration? Well, the answer is twofold. First, it's the law of large numbers and the wisdom of crowds. We have all kinds of people in the marketplace. We have market makers and hedge funds, insurance companies, institutional traders, and then there's traders like you and me. None of us could individually make a prediction of where the stock is going, but together, the wisdom of crowds allows us all as a group to collectively predict where the market is going accurately. And with that, we derive implied volatility, which then falls into delta. And then we can use that delta to see just how safe our $80 strike actually is. Okay, so I'm bullish on the stock, so I bought a bull put spread. What that means is I sold a put option at the $80 strike price, and I bought a put option at the $78 strike price. Now, we know the stock is trading at $88.92, so if the stock goes up, I make my credit, I get to keep it, and everything's great. And if the stock goes down, well, it can actually fall by as much as 10%, and I still make the same amount of money. But if it falls down past Past my $80 strike, I'm protected with my defined risk with my $78 put. Anyway, this $80 put option has a 25 delta. That means that at the time of expiration, it has a 25% chance of being in the money. And my $78 put has a 15 delta. That means that it has a 15% chance of being in the money at the time of expiration. So on average, the break even point or my profit line is a 20 delta. And that means that I have an 80% probability of profit because it has an 20% delta means I have a 20% probability of being in the money at the time of expiration. And therefore the inverse of that is my probability of profit, which is 80%. 
Now, of course, this is based on my bullish outlook. If I wanted to have a bearish outlook, I could do the exact opposite and I could do a bear call spread. And in this case, I would have the, I would sell the call option at the $100 strike with a 25 delta and I would buy the call option at the 102 strike with a 15 delta and the average would be a 20 delta and I would still have an 80% probability of profit. You can see that whether I'm bearish or whether I'm bullish, I can still take a position that gives me an 80% likelihood of profit. What if instead I had a different outlook? What if I thought that this stock was going to range in the $90 price range? I could say that I don't think it's going to fall below $80 and I don't think it's going to go up above $100. So what do I do then? Well, in this case, I can sell an iron condor. I would sell a bear call spread and I would also sell a bull put spread. Each of those has an 80% probability, but combined it has a 60% probability of profit on the iron condor. Okay, that's it for this video. Join me in the next part where I talk about risk reward ratio and IV mean reversion so you can really identify good credit spreads. Okay, I'll see you there. If you want to see more videos in this series, make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons below.